Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It is Pentecost, so we're singing about the Spirit this morning. And for our gathering music, we're going to go. Um, we're going to sing one of the songs from the service, which is on the top of page two. So it's called Spirit Song. So join with us. Good morning, I'm stalling so the senior choir members can make it up in time to sing our call to worship this morning. There, oh. and here come our graduates, come on in, we're going to clap for you early. There's one more in the balcony and two that couldn't be with us today, but we do celebrate with them. And good morning and welcome to worship this morning at First English Lutheran Church on this Pentecost Sunday. Special thanks to all who helped decorate and make our worship space spirit-filled this morning. We also welcome those listening by means of our broadcast on KDIO radio this morning, as, long as, as well as our friends at the Fairway View neighborhoods who will be worshiping with us by tape a little later on. 
If you haven't filled out the friendship pads yet, please do so, send them down and back and greet one another and especially any guests that we may have with us this morning. Our broadcast this morning is sponsored by Bill and Marlene Elmstrom and we've got a triple whammy today. We have in honor of our 2018 graduates, we have in celebration of Carol Barrett's special day and her children are present this morning to help provide fellowship and we thank them. And also in honor of Bill and Marlene's, is it the 70th wedding anniversary, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> Feels like it. <laughs> and we didn't practice that beforehand. <laughs> in honor and in gratitude of their 50th wedding anniversary, which is today. So we congratulate Bill and Marlene. And since Carol's having one of those milestone birthdays that end in a zero, and it's not a hundred, there, now you don't feel that old, do you, Carol? <laughs> Let's sing happy birthday to Carol if the choir would start, please. Happy birthday to you. also have the blessing and sending of our graduates this morning following the affirmation of faith. We also thank you for moving over when you notice the sanctuary is filling up be, to make room for additional people. Our youth gathering attendees continue to collect books for students in Houston. There's some information in the bulletin this morning for you to check on that. And on a sadder note, we ask that you keep Larry and Shannon Millerburn and family in your prayers as they mourn the passing of his mom, Dolores. I believe her service was yesterday. Our annual FELC trip to Target Field in the Twins game is set for July 7th. Contact Marla Stry if you need information on that. Uh, Marilee Hawkes is out in the narthex on behalf of our Board of Evangelism to hand out directories to those of you who haven't received yours yet. Uh, tomorrow, 6 o'clock, cleanup day here. The Board of Properties has a list. So if you're willing to come and help, they will have something for you to do. Uh, Note the announcement regarding a technology fund and some other items needing attention, as well as the notice for our annual election meeting coming up in June. And late afternoon today, 5 o'clock, will be the baccalaureate service here for the seniors. So if you are able to attend that, please do so. There is some information in the bulletin regarding open houses. Uh, you'll have to ask the graduates if they didn't have one in, if they want to tell you where theirs is, and they can tell you that as well. So are there any announcements that I'm overlooking this morning? All right, thank you. Good morning, Lee. Good morning. So we will save our greeting and sharing of the peace for after the choir anthem for our call to worship, Come Holy Spirit.
And please rise if you are able for the greeting and sharing of the peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please take a moment to greet one another. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the one who fashions us, the one who heals us, the one who reforms us again and again. Amen. Please be seated for our song of mercy, Revival Firefall. Although God has given the church the message of reconciliation in and through Jesus Christ, we fall short of God's call to be salt of the earth and light to the world. Almighty God, you poured out your spirit upon gathered disciples, creating bold tongues, open ears, and a new community of faith. We confess that we hold back the force of your spirit among us. We do not listen for your word of grace, speak the good news of your love, or live as a people made one in Christ. Have mercy on us, O God. Transform our timid lives by the power of your Holy Spirit and fill us with a flaming desire to be your faithful people, doing your will for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
God's life-giving word and spirit enable us to live in a new obedience, opening new possibilities of life for society and the world. Thanks be to God for the good news. In In Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Our song of praise, Spirit Song. We join together in the prayer of the day. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us your spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The reading can be found on page 90 of the New Testament in the Pew Bibles. Originally, Pentecost was a Jewish Thanksgiving-type festival celebrated seven weeks after Passover. On this particular Pentecost, however, the Holy Spirit is poured out upon the entire community of believers just as Jesus had promised and the scripture had prophesied. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, the entire community bears witness to God's activity in multiple languages. A reading from Acts, the second chapter, beginning with the first verse. When the day of Pentecost had come, They were all gathered together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, 
And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deed of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But the others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in heaven above, and signs on earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading can be found on page 120 of the New Testament in the Pew Bibles. By pouring the Holy Spirit into our hearts, God gives us the promised first fruit of eternal life so that we await God's future in hope. In the meantime, the Spirit also intercedes for us by carrying the prayers of our weak human hearts to God. A reading from Romans, the 8th chapter, beginning with the 22nd verse. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now, hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of the Lord. I invite any children to come forward at this time. Good morning. Well, you guys are quiet this morning. Are you tired? Yeah, you are. Scoot on up a little bit, guys, so the people coming have some room. All right. This morning, I have with me one of my favorite things. Yes, it's a really, really, really nice balloon. I like playing with balloons. Something's wrong with this thing. What's wrong with my balloon? It doesn't float. Well, what does it need? Air. air. Not hot air either, by the way. It needs air. Without air, this balloon is absolutely not good for much of anything. And this balloon can teach us a lesson about today. Come on up. 
Today is a very special Sunday in the church here. Anyone know what it's called? Can you say Pentecost? Yes, Pentecost. Today is Pentecost Sunday. We wear red. The pyramids are red. Mrs. Nornis put special red candles on the altar. Usually they'd sit behind the railing, but we were afraid of fires with quilts, so we moved them up there this morning. Now, we heard Liz read what happened on that first Pentecost Sunday. They were hiding because they were still scared, and all of a sudden they heard a strong wind, and flames came on each person. And they talked in a whole bunch of different languages, and all kinds of people believed in Jesus on that day. It said they added over 3,000 people to the church in one day. That's pretty good, isn't it? Now, if we added 3,000 people to this church, we'd have to add two more stories on, wouldn't we? But that's how the church started and grew. But Jesus promised he would send somebody to help the disciples. And what came on Pentecost? The Holy Spirit came. So now, it's kind of like that balloon. That's what this balloon can teach us about Pentecost. Because the Holy Spirit fills us with faith like we would fill a balloon with air. So we have another balloon here. It's not full of helium, so it won't float. But this one is full of air, so you can play with it. Yeah. So now, if you, if you and I are playing tap back and forth with this balloon, is it always going to go where it's supposed to? No, somebody over there might feel left out. And that's how the Holy Spirit works, because the Holy Spirit doesn't always send us where we want to be. It's kind of like you're at school. Whoa! <laughs> Spike, two points. Now I'm going to hang on to it. The Holy Spirit, we don't know where the Holy Spirit's going to work. So like if you're at school and somebody's sitting all by themselves on the playground, you can be like this balloon. And you can go play with them. You can go include them. Because that's what the Holy Spirit does. Now you see those guys sitting right there? Better wave at them. They're getting nervous. And then Kelsey over there. What age do you guys start school at? Three or four if you go to preschool. Do you know how old these guys are? 18, most of them. That means they've been going to school for 15 years. Most of them probably have four to eight more if they're all going to be doctors. <laughs> so today, they are, we're honoring our graduates because next Sunday they graduate from high school. And today we give them a special quilt because the Holy Spirit is also called our comforter. And a comforter takes care of you and keeps you warm. So we give them a quilt as their seniors to help them remember that they are surrounded by the love of the Holy Spirit and by the love of everybody in this congregation, and that includes you. So we congratulate them, but we also pray that the Holy Spirit is with them every day of their lives, and we pray that the Holy Spirit is with you every day of your lives. You're three? Oh, that's good. You may return to your seats. Thank you for helping. Please rise if you are able for our gospel acclamation.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I have said these things to you so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you about them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asked me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father, and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. We will continue with the anthem from our senior choir with a solo by Kelsey Ehrenberg, This I Pray. Ch- 
share your meal with others so God's goodness can be seen. This I pray. This I pray. This I pray. This I pray. That you have God's best. Be strong and blessed. That you have God's best. Be strong. Thank you very much and graduates I hope you know that the senior choir does that song especially for our seniors each year and that is the prayer we have there's several more I'm going to get to those in a minute this is the day that the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it amen if you think about it what could be a more fitting setting for the blessing and sending of our graduates than the day of Pentecost a day when we acknowledge the work of the Holy Spirit during confirmation years, we often discussed what exactly is the work of the Holy Spirit. Now, as we said in the children's message, the Holy Spirit is often called the Comforter. And think about that, too. How does that make you feel, knowing that Jesus sent someone to comfort and to care for you? The Spirit is also called the Advocate, and most importantly, the Spirit of Truth. Jesus makes the promise that the spirit of truth will guide us into the way of truth. And that's our first prayer for you today, that the Holy Spirit will guide you in the way of truth. Then we hear that question, but what is truth? And in our gospel lesson today, John gives us some answers to that question. First, John says, Jesus is the truth. Jesus is full of grace and truth. And that's another prayer for you today. Because Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the gospel proclaims the truth. So that takes us to prayer number two. When you want to test to see if something is the real truth, put it to the Jesus test. John, also, and because you want to see, does it point to what Jesus taught you? So what it all boils down to after all this education, one word, Jesus. It is all about Jesus. Test question, when did you get the Holy Spirit? When you were baptized, someone helped you. Yes, because at your baptism, each of you was sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the Christ, cross of Christ forever. And as a result of this, each of us here is given the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that's the same spirit of truth that Jesus is talking about. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit will guide us, will guide you in the way of truth. And as our advocate, the Spirit will look out for your best interests and on your behalf. Martin Luther had another way of saying this in a small catechism explanation of the third article. I won't ask how many of you remember it because most of us don't. But Martin Luther wrote, I believe that I cannot, by my own understanding or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, made me holy, and kept me in true faith. And that's what the Holy Spirit does for each of us. Then Luther goes on to make an important point. He says the Holy Spirit also calls, gathers the community of faith, the church. So the spirit of truth is not just present in us as individuals, but as a community, as the church. And that's prayer number three for you, that you surround yourself with a caring community of faith, with caring friends, people who will build you up instead of tearing you down. Now, one final point about the issue of truth. In the Gospel of John and in the whole New Testament, truth demands action. The truth of Jesus calls us to be witnesses to Jesus and to the gospel in the world. Or to put it another way, you don't just know the truth, 
but you are to live the truth. And this is the truth that sets us free to action, to witness, to advocacy, and to service in the world. And that's prayer four for you today, that your life will be faith and love in action. And now it's time for my annual advice to graduates. A question for you this morning. Are you a carrot? Are you an egg? Or are you coffee beans? Care to volunteer? I didn't think so. I wouldn't want to either because I don't know where it's going. Let me explain. A young woman went to her mother and told her about her life after high school and how things were so hard for her. She did not know how she was going to make it, and she wanted to give up. She was tired of all the fighting and the struggling. It seemed as if one problem was solved, a new one would arise. Her mom took her to the kitchen. She filled three pots with water, and in the first she put carrots, in the second she put eggs, and in the last one she put ground-up coffee beans. She then let them sit and boil without saying a word. In about 20 minutes, she turned off the burners. She took out the carrots and put them in a bowl. She pulled the eggs out, placed them in a bowl. Then she ladled the coffee out and placed it in a bowl. She turned to her daughter and asked, tell me, what do you see? Her daughter said, I see carrots, eggs, and coffee. So the mom brought her closer and asked her to feel the carrots. She did and noticed that they had gotten soft. She then asked her to take an egg and break it. After pulling off the shell, she observed the hard-boiled egg. And finally, she asked her to sip the coffee. The daughter smiled as she tasted its rich aroma and flavor and then asked, so what's the point? Her mother explained that each of these objects had faced the same adversity, boiling water, but each one reacted differently. The carrot went in strong, hard, and unrelenting. However, after being subjected to the boiling water, it turned to mush. It softened and became weak. The egg had been fragile to start, it was its thin outer shell protecting its liquid interior. But after sitting through the boiling water, its inside became hardened. The ground coffee beans, on the other hand, were unique because after they were put in the boiling water, they changed the water. So which are you, the mom asked her daughter. When adversity knocks on your door, how will you respond? Are you a carrot, an egg, or a coffee bean? So think of this, which am I? Am I the carrot that seems strong at first, but with pain and adversity, do I wilt and become soft and lose my strength? Or am I the egg that starts with a soft and malleable heart, but changes with the heat? Do I have a fluid spirit, but after the trials of life have started to weigh me down, do I become hardened and stiff? Does my shell look the same, but on the inside, am I bitter and tough with a stiff spirit and a hardened heart? Or am I like the coffee bean? The bean actually changes the hot water, the very circumstance that brings the pain in the first place. When the water gets hot, that's what releases the fragrance and flavor. So if you're like the bean, when things are at their worst, you get better, and you change the situation around you. When the hours are the darkest and the trials are their greatest, will you elevate to another level? How will you handle the adversity that will come into your life? If you don't believe me, ask your parents and grandparents. We will face adversity. And that is why today is so significant, because that is why Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. Which brings me to the final prayer for you today, that you daily ask for the Holy Spirit to lead you, to guide you, and to keep you in the faith, because that's what we will be praying for you each day as well. And one last thing, come back and visit old Dave sometime, okay? All right, amen. Please rise if you are able for the affirmation of faith. We believe the whole Christian church is called and united by God. As the people of God, we love one another. We experience, practice, and pursue community with one another. We give ourselves willingly and joyfully in service to one another. We are a benefit and blessing to one another. We share one faith and have one calling. We are one body and are of one soul and mind. We have one God and creator. We have one Son of God who redeemed us. 
We are filled with one spirit. We are baptized with one baptism. We eat of one bread and drink of one cup. We confess one name and are obedient to one Lord. We work for one cause and share one hope. Thanks be to God. Amen. The congregation may be seated, and at this time I invite the graduates and their parents to come forward. And graduates, if you would take the blue folders and give them to any parental unit that doesn't have one at this time. And the others you can just set down. They're all tall. <laughs> On this special day when we celebrate your graduation from high school, and present you with the gift of a quilt, we ask God's blessing on you and on the whole people of God in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. God of creation, we ask your blessing on these young people as they enter a new period in their lives of faith. Bless them and grant them your gifts, joy as they live among your faithful people, openness in hearing your word, and thankfulness in sharing your supper, eagerness in sharing the good news of Christ through their words and their actions. Dedication in serving all people, following the example of the Lord Jesus, and a hunger for justice and peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And if the graduates would please kneel. And as has been the tradition for many years here at First English, each year our Day of Love quilting group presents each graduate with a denim quilt that they hope they will take along in their next chapter of life. And every time the world might get a little cold, just wrap yourselves up in it. Unless it's 98 degrees, then you probably will just want to turn up the air conditioning. But this is a reminder of the love that this assembly has for each of its children. And now I ask the parents to wrap the quilt around their child's shoulder without smushing the flower, if you can. And then lay your hands on your graduate, on your son or daughter. Dear friends in Christ, there was a day when your parents held you in their arms and rocked you to sleep. They cuddled you in a blanket to keep you warm, safe, and comforted. Very soon you will be launching a new life, away from the safety and security of this home, family, church, and community. As you go out into the world, may this quilt be a reminder of your parents' love and the nurture of this Christian community. Wherever you go, when the night is cold and you feel alone, May it help you remember that you are never alone. And then parents, I ask you to read the words printed on the inside of the folder. And as a congregation, I ask you to covenant with these parents for the ongoing support of these young men and women as they celebrate this milestone and move forward in faith into this new phase of their lives. Will you routinely lift up these young people in your prayers? If you do, say, we will, and we ask God to help and guide us. We will, and we ask God to help and guide us. And now let's say it with enthusiasm. We will, and we ask God to help and guide us. And now I ask the parents to kneel and the graduates to get up and place your hand 
on your parents. As well as you are able with one hand hanging on. I can take that for you. There. All right, graduates, if you would be so kind as to read the words printed on yours. And now, parents, if you would stand with your graduate. And you can leave the quilts up here. So, Wherever you wander, no matter how dark the night, may the warmth of this quilt, the love of your parents, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship of this church, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. And if you would turn and face the congregation, let's have a round of applause for these parents. And of course, the graduates as well. So. <laughs> and is there anyone else here that has anything to present today? Parents, you may return to your seats and graduates, you will remain up here for another little presentation. From the Board of Education, um, we're going to present you guys with a little gift, and we congratulate you and wish you the best of luck in your future. And from the Board of Lay Ministry, we're also going to present them a gift, and we wish them the best in everything they do. to those who have been acolyting since seventh grade. And this group has been all serving as acolytes since seventh grade. So thank you, congratulations once again. You may return to your seat. And we will continue with our offering and our offering song, Spirit of Gentleness.
Please rise if you are able for prayer. Filled with the Holy Spirit, we join the church in every place, praying for the world that God so loves. Lord of life, you baptize your people with the fire of the Spirit. Grace your church in all its forms with your visions and dreams, so that as we testify, all will hear the gospel and call upon your saving name. Lord, in your mercy. You renew the face of the earth. Continue to bless all those involved in this planting season with safety and favorable weather. Help us to show care for your creation. Comfort those who are affected by storms and especially those who are affected by the latest school shootings in Texas. Please send your spirit of peace upon all so we can find a way to end this. Because our world seems more and more troubled each day. Bring peace also to Syria, to Palestine and Israel, and whenever conflict, wherever conflict is present. Give your spirit of wisdom to leaders of this nation and all nations and factions. Keep safe all who work to keep order in our world, especially Peter Hansen and all who serve in areas of conflict. Make us to be instruments of your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Pour your spirit on all who suffer in any way. Guide us in giving dignity to those without a voice. Give your healing spirit to the lives of all who need your care, especially those in assisted living and long-term care facilities, and also Jerry, Nikki, Lee, Marlo, Mariah, Howard, Jim, Jerry, Mark, Gail, Aaron, Sharon, Megan, Roger, Gordy, Anders, Paulette, Lauren, Natalie, Jeanette, Charlotte, Bella, Christopher, Dorothy, Tordy, Emily, Annika, Kennedy, Terry, Gwen, and those we name silently in our hearts at this time. 
Send us to shelter, clothe, feed, and visit all who are in need, and make us your healing and compassionate presence in the world. Lord, in your mer mercy. Here. Send your spirit of comfort to all who mourn, especially Larry and Shannon Milliburn and the family of his mother, Dolores. Console them with the knowledge that we all have eternal life in you. Lord, in your mercy. Here. Your spirit has called and gathered this congregation into life in Christ. Help us in our weaknesses. Teach us to pray. Search our hearts and intercede for us. Give us compassion to live in faithful community and to be a blessing to others. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you for the gift of relationship and for celebration. We thank you for 50 years of marriage for Bill and Marlene, for 80 years of life for Carol, and we ask that you give a bright future to our graduates today. Bless all relationships and families. Lord, in your mercy. By the sure guidance of your Holy Spirit, we lift up our prayers in trust and thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God, whose power working in us can do much more than we can ask or imagine, grant you the gifts of faith, hope, and peace. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, sent out by the Spirit to gladly serve and share God's love. Our sending song, Send Us Out, please be seated.